Hey guys, Frightener22 here, and welcome to my June 20th DVD update. I know it's been about like two months since my last DVD update, and I'm really, really sorry about that. I've been getting slammed recently with a lot of messages asking where I've been, when the next update's gonna be, etc. So I figured it's finally time to buckle down and start showing you guys, you know, a continuation of just like the giant amount of stuff that I've gotten since the last update. Now, I know in my last update, I was seen wearing, like, the Woody hat and the Disney hoodie because I had a lot of Disney-related titles to show you. And uh, in this update, there's going to be an extension of that same, you know, Disney load um, carrying over into this update. But, you know, this update and probably the next five or more are going to still be a lot of back stuff. Like, I'm still just not anywhere near close to catching up and in, to showing you guys, like, my most recent stuff of, like, what I got just yesterday. So all the stuff that I'm showing you guys is stuff that's I've been sitting on for, like, the better part of two months. So it's a lot. Like, I think in the last update, I even mentioned that I have, like, you know, five or six pages typed in a Word document of all the stuff that I need to show in my updates. So... I'm going to go ahead and get into this. I'm going to show a lot of stuff. I'm not sure how much stuff I'm going to be able to exactly talk about because I know there's just been a ton of stuff that I just haven't been able to get um, to watching yet because, you know, I've just been getting slammed with so much stuff coming in that I've wanted that it's just a real big struggle trying to stay up on top of all this. So without further ado, here is finally my June 20th DVD update. Um, the first one I got, like I said, it's a continuation of some more Disney-related titles, and this is The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I've never seen any of these movies, and I think Disney had um, distributed three of them before kind of just ending the relationship with Walden Media, where they're not going to continue um, doing Narnia films uh, with Disney, or Disney's not going to continue uh, doing the Narnia films with Walden Media, for that matter. But, you know, who's to say they might, uh, you know, another company might get picked up to handle the distribution of Narnia and what have you, but like I said, I've never seen these. They seem like really cool current fantasy films, so I decided to scoop them up because they have the, of course, Disney's association with it. Following that one, I got The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, and as I said, being a huge Disney junkie and collecting all the Disney Blu-rays, especially the ones with slipcovers, this one was actually the biggest pain to find um, with a slipcover. I was, you know, checking Amazon sellers, eBay lots. It was just, it was a real hard time trying to find this film with the slipcover, but, you know, after a couple of weeks or, you know, it was probably about a week or two it took just to try to track down one that actually had this, uh, I, you know, became successful in getting it, so I'm really happy to have this one. And the final one is a Blu-ray DVD copy of The Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. And this is a really, it's a bigger sized Blu-ray case than most are um, used to. But yeah, it's really cool. I really like all the art and the graphics that are going on in all these Narnia boxes. So, I'm, you know, if, if they live up to even like one-tenth of what's going on on the front cover, then I'm excited to be checking them out. Uh, moving on, the next one I got is the Blu-ray DVD um copy of Race to Witch Mountain, the remake with uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I just started, actually, yesterday, uh, Journey to the Mysterious Island with Dwayne Johnson, and I only got, like, 20 minutes into it, but I'm really enjoying that. Dwayne Johnson, he's a little cheesy, I mean, but I think he's good in the roles that he's been picking, especially, you know, he's he's picked a lot of, uh, you know, family fare that's seemed to be proving pretty well for him, because he keeps landing roles like that, and I think audiences and kids uh, really like him in those types of roles, so he's definitely carving out, like, a niche for him, but, you know, he definitely tries to juggle this with um, maintaining a very action picture oriented thing. I mean, he was just in the recent Fast and Furious movie, so he's definitely trying to keep one foot in that as well as, you know, the successful family movie. So this is one that I had that I decided to pick up, of course, with the Disney logo on it. But of course, I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, another one I got, not because of any real interest in the movie, but because if it has that classic Disney logo above its title, regardless of what the film is, I'm gonna own it because I'm just a Disney completist when it comes to home video titles, so I actually got this one, um, basically for free because I had a bunch of, um, Disney reward points accumulated on my account and I was allowed to select a free movie, so I decided to pick one that I just didn't own yet and I was happy, so I, um, I didn't have to spend any money on this, and that's Martin Lawrence and Raven Simone in College Road Trip. I don't really know much about this. I vaguely remember the trailers for this when it came out, you know, a handful of years ago, but like I said, I haven't seen it and I got it for free, so I'm not complaining. 
Uh, the next one I got is actually a short but pretty well done documentary that Disney put out. It's called Roving Mars. Like I said, it's pretty short. I think it, it's not even an hour. I think it's like 40 somewhat, yeah, it's 40 minutes exactly. And it's basically, you know, about, um, from what I remember, I think it's about, um, about how NASA was landing um, this very experimental type, um, like, uh, like explorer basically on the colony of Mars and just kind of searching out and all the data and stuff that it was able to get from Mars and what they learned about it. So like I said, it's only 40 minutes and in that 40 minutes, they actually managed to get a lot of information out and it was pretty interesting. So a definitely, um, you know, kind of an unusual thing for Disney to put out, but it was pretty cool that they did. So I'm happy to have this. Um, the next one I got were just total, um, they were complete, uh, rebuys actually because I've already I've already owned all these movies on DVD and a seven disc Blu-ray box set but I wanted to get this because of course I'm a Disney nut wanted to get these slip covers in the whole collection and I gotta say all of them all four of them now lined up together with slip covers looks really really nice on a shelf so I'm just gonna breeze through these but I got the two disc Blu-ray um, DVD Blu-ray combo pack of Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl the best one in the series hands down of course, the second one, Dead Man's Chest, and uh, the third one, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. The second and third one got a little too convoluted for a lot of people's taste, but I, I returned to all of them before seeing um, on Stranger Tides. And when you watch them, especially you know now that years have passed, they definitely settle more and they're a little bit easier to follow, uh, especially when you kind of watch them like three consecutive days in a row, but they're definitely a little bit easier to follow now that there's been a bunch of years to digest them and what have you, but it doesn't matter if you're, you know, coming into the fourth one, um, not have seen the second or third one because, uh, you know, it's basically, uh, you know, rejumping of the franchise. It's really Captain Jack's story again, so... Definitely had to get those. Um, the next one continuing this Disney um, lineup is the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of Chicken Little. I had never seen this, but I actually did get to it a few weeks ago, and I did enjoy it. I thought it was actually a pretty fun movie. From what I understand, I think this was the first movie that Disney released in Disney Digital 3D, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I think it was pretty successful for them. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I definitely enjoyed it. It's not, you know... In, uh, amazing on like a Pixar level, but it's fun. It definitely had um, its own unique share of laughs, so I'm definitely happy to own this. Uh, the next one I got, <clears throat> no edition of this actually. There was a single disc Blu ray that I believe is out of print, so now the only version that you can um, readily get is the Blu ray DVD combo, and none of the versions, including this one, had a slip cover, so this is the one that um, you know you are. Uh, made to deal with and this is the blu-ray dvd combo pack of beverly hills chihuahua uh, i haven't seen this yet so i'm hoping to get to it at some point and then following that up uh this is pretty recent too i think this only came out within the last year and this is the blu-ray dvd combo pack of beverly hills chihuahua 2 obviously i haven't seen this one yet but this one does in fact come with a slip cover all the slip covers come in the first original pressing of the movie and we have a beverly hills chihuahua 3 to look forward to in the fall so woo these films must be doing pretty good if they keep uh, churning them out they're kind of like you know they must be doing just as well as those buddies movies that i own uh, the next one I got is the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of John Travolta and Robin Williams in Old Dogs. Uh, this movie wasn't really that great. I've seen it. Uh, not overly impressed considering the talent in it. You know, Travolta, Williams, even have Seth Green in it. But it's not... There are some funny moments, but overall it's pretty disappointing when you have, you know the combination of Williams and Travolta, who are obviously, you know, no stranger to comedy and are absolutely well capable of doing really, really good comedy. It's just, I guess, the material and the script or whatever, it just it just wasn't there to make a great movie. But like I said, there's some worthwhile moments in it, but comes with a slipcover, it's Disney, had to have it in the collection. Uh, the next one I got is a Blu-ray DVD combo pack, and to my knowledge, I don't think this is actually... The Disney logo is on top of this film, but I think it was really more of like an acquisition of theirs. I don't think that the Disney studio was responsible for crafting the animation or doing it or whatnot. Um, 
I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure that Disney just more or less put their slapped their name on it and handled distribution and what have you. But uh, this is the wild. Um, I this definitely came out I think prior to Madagascar, but this is definitely a film that you never hear anybody talk about. I don't think I even knew about it until I was really you know got myself researching what Disney titles I didn't own and I came across this. So I'm definitely curious about it because I I've never heard anything about it. And, uh, you know, it definitely seems to be going uh, a route that uh, Madagascar kind of struck gold with. So, I don't know, it could go either way, but I'm definitely curious to check it out. The next one I got is um, the 100th Anniversary Collector's uh, Universal Studios edition uh, in a digibook fashion of All Quiet on the Western Front. I really like that Universal has gotten into this whole 100th anniversary of their studio. I really wish Paramount would kind of step up and kind of do a little bit more than they've been doing, but Universal has been doing a really, really phenomenal job putting out tons of great titles on Blu-ray and DVD, and some are getting, you know, even extra special uh, treatment in these uh, really nice digibooks. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front has one, Pillow Talk has one, uh, Out of Africa has one, but uh, this is one of the more recent ones that I picked up, and uh, yeah, I haven't checked this one out yet, but I've seen clips of like before and afters of the restoration job that Universal achieved on this, and it looks mind-blowing, so I'm pretty excited to see um, you know, the whole film and just see the kind of restoration that they did on this, because this movie, I think, is really, really old. I think it go dates back to, like, the early 30s, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, I'm definitely um, excited to check this one out. It's a real classic film, so should be awesome. Uh, the next one I got, I've seen this movie, I just haven't watched it on Blu-ray yet since getting it, and this is the uh, Image Entertainment release of the 1925 Lon Chaney film, Phantom of the Opera. I grew up always loving the image of the Phantom of the Opera. He was always like a favorite monster of mine for some reason. I just really loved that image of the half mask and the playing of the organ and what have you. So Phantom of the Opera is definitely um, a, a movie monster that dates back to my childhood, so it definitely, um, you know, definitely strikes a really strong chord in me, so I'm really happy to own this. Um, I hear the Blu-ray treatment and, um, you know, screenshots that I've seen, and it looks really, really well, so I'm excited to check this one out in, you know, its full glory. Um, Shout Factory continuing the really popular and uh, what seems to be a very successful run of the older Nickelodeon titles, and this is the second season of Rocco's Modern Life in a two-disc set. Um, Rocco's Modern Life 3... It's going to be coming out really soon, then there's only just uh, one more season after that to complete the series, so I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, not much more else I can say. Uh, I burned through the first season really quick. It's a classic Nick tune, one of the best that um, Nick ever had in the 90s, so I'm excited that Shot Factory struck the deal with Nickelodeon and be putting out all these older 90s um, dated uh, programs that we all grew up loving, so definitely check this out. Uh, the next one I got, like I said, you know, now that I'm seeing all these ones and how far this dates back, these are things that date back, like, just so long ago. I mean, I remember getting this stuff in the mail, just, you know, that they were pretty long ago. Uh, the next one I got is the complete second season of Family Matters. Um, the first season came out, like, well over a year ago, so I'm really happy that a second season was finally greenlit and came out. Uh, the show did run for quite a number of years, so I really hope that the sales are there and they're high enough that they're going to continue putting seasons out, because this is a, a show that is so classic. I loved growing up with it, watching it on TGIF, so I really hope that this film, that this um, show, rather, doesn't suffer... Um, you know, the, the fate of, of uh, low sales, and then it just gets canceled altogether. So go out and please support and buy the first and second season of Family Man, uh, Matters to ensure that we get the entire run of the show. I hate when shows are canceled midway into their run on DVD. Uh, the next one I got is Volume 4 of the new episodes, actually, of Mike Judge's Beefs and Butthead. I caught, like, I think it was the first or second episode of the new series... The animation is exactly the same. The humor is exactly intact. I mean, it's like, you know, we shut our TVs off in 1995 and woke up in 2012, and the same kind of quality that is Beavis and Butthead is still there. So I'm excited to cut into this whole brand new season. So uh, it looks great so far. I'm very excited to see it continue and buy uh, future volumes of it. The next two I got are actually pretty cool ones, and they're really um, awesome value packs. Uh, the first one I got is the first um, Season 1, Volume 1, consisting of 32 episodes of Heatcliff. I really liked this show growing up. I had a bunch of the VHS tapes when I was a kid, so once um, 
I think it was Echo Bridge, no, Mill Creek actually put this up. Once Mill Creek uh, put this up for pre-order, I knew I had to have it. I think it was like $8 when it first came out. So you can't really argue, you know, 7 or $8 for 32 episodes. And like I said, this is only, you know, season one, volume one. So there's going to be quite a lot uh, more episodes coming of this. Uh, I can only imagine that I would figure the rest of the season would probably be at least another 30 episodes, but like I said, for 7 or $8, you can't really complain um, with with that. And uh, I'm going to actually crack it open and see how many discs are in it. Um, there's a, It's three discs, so, you know, I'm sure that's not bad. It, you know, basically um, comes out to like 9 or 10 episodes a disc, but, you know, Mill Creek, say what you will, Mill Creek and Echo Bridge kind of fall under that whole bargain basement price um, dealing of, uh, DVDs, but Mill Creek, I think, is definitely one of the better ones. I mean, they really try to give you a lot for your buck. I don't really like the fact that they kind of put the discs and sleeves and stack them one on top of the other, but like I said, it's kind of nitpicky stuff when you're barely paying anything for these releases, so it's cool that they do give you a lot. Um, the next one I got, I, I got because uh, Shout Factory originally was putting these out, but the sales were, weren't were doing so hot for them, and I think they only got about half the series out, I think maybe the first season, so um, I never got around to getting it for whatever reason, so once I saw this pre-order go, uh, go up, I was happy to get this because I knew for like 10 bucks I could have it all, so this is the complete series consisting of all 40 episodes of Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego. I remember this being on as a kid, but I definitely remember the game show um, much more when uh, Michael Malley was hosting it. Michael Malley, back in the 90s, you know, late 80s and uh, early to mid-90s, was hosting so many game shows. I mean, he bounced around all over the place. He was on Finders Keepers, then Guts, Global Guts, War on Earth is Carmen San Diego. So he did, you know, just tons and tons of game shows. He's an awesome presence in the game shows, too. Shouts a lot, too, especially at Mo when he wants scores. Um... The next one I got, my buddy actually picked this up for me at a uh, Blockbuster closing, and th this was brand new, still in the package, with a slipcover for five bucks, and it was the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of The Last Exorcism. I really, really enjoyed this film. I Netflix it, and I dug the hell out of it, and I'm really excited to see that filming has commenced on a sequel, so I can't wait for it. I thought this was one of the better Exorcism devil-esque films to come out in the last few years, so definitely check this one out. Uh, the next one I got on DVD is the unrated director's cut of The Human Centipede 2, full sequence. What can you say about this one? Uh, it's shot in black and white. It's disgusting. It's morbid. It's ridiculous. It's, you know, ten times, you know, a hundred times more sadistic than the original film. So for shock value alone, it's definitely worth seeing if you're into, you know, horror or, you know, gore movies. Um, there's some wild, wild shit in this movie, so be forewarned. Um, you know, it, like I said, it's it's for shock value alone, so if you're into that sort of thing, it's worth checking out. Um, it was it was pretty cringe-inducing, so, you know, if you have the stomach for it, check this one out. Uh, the next one I got is one that I'm bummed that I haven't gotten to, so now that I'm uh, showing it to you guys right here, I gotta get to it uh, sooner rather than later, because it seems pretty cool, and, uh, this is, um, a recent film called The Sleeper, and I think this is kind of, um, a more recent film that's kind of taking the direction that Ty West's House of the Devil did, and this is kind of a film that has the spirit of horror movies, you know, atmospheric horror movies from the 80s, and I think it kind of has that shooting style and look to it, so I like films like that. I really loved House of the Devil, so I'm hoping to get the same kind of excitement, um, that I did out of House of the Devil in this, so hopefully. And the last three that I'm going to show you guys for this particular update are all from Scorpion releasing, and they're part of Katarina's Nightmare Theater line. Uh, the first one is Whispers. I actually just watched this the last two weeks, I think. So, surprisingly, guys, actually a lot of the stuff I did manage to check out in this update, um, looking at it now. But uh, Whispers was really fun. I liked it. Uh, it has Chris Sarandon in it. Um, it's a weird one to describe, actually. Uh, you got to just, like, read the synopsis. Or better yet, don't even read the synopsis. Just pop the DVD in and just play it. Because, you know, the element of surprise in movies is so much better than reading it and kind of weighing it. Oh, do I like this? Do I not? Whatever. But this, I can tell you that I really, really enjoyed this one a lot. So I would highly, highly recommend this one. Uh, the next one is another one uh, called Double Exposure. I 
watched this one night. I got really delirious and tired, so I don't really have a fond recollection of it, so I don't really feel like I've seen it. I remember the first 20 minutes pretty well, but after that I think I passed out and I must have convinced myself the next day that I saw it all and just didn't like it, but that's not really fair. So I'm going to give um, this film another go around, but from what I remember seeing, I think that it was, you know, kind of setting itself up pretty nicely, but like I said, I can't really comment if it's good or if it's garbage just yet. Uh, the next one I got, uh, one of the movies in this I've watched, the other one I haven't yet, and this is a double feature, actually, of Mark of Cain and Thrill Kill, and the star of both, um, the star of Mark of Cain is also the star of Thrill Kill, so, um, yeah, you kind of get, um, it's, uh, two terrifying classics from Canada, they build this as, but Mark of Cain is the one that I did watch, and this was actually a really, really good movie, I like this one a lot, it's about twin brothers, uh, one is okay, the other one is definitely um, not all there because he ends up killing his father at a teenage age and he's like put away basically for the rest of his life while his brother kind of goes on with his life, marries and what has you. And then, of course, um, you know, the crazy brother escapes, wants revenge on his brother now for kind of giving up all hope on him and what have you. So, yeah, this was actually a really good movie. I enjoyed the hell out of it, so I'm looking forward to hopping over to Thrill Kill one of these uh, one day soon and seeing how that one fares out. Well, guys, that concludes my June 20th DVD update. There's going to be plenty of plenty of more titles that I have to show you. I have this down, and this is probably only half a page of the six pages of stuff that I have to show you guys just to get all caught up with everything, which I'm convinced I'm never going to be able to successfully do. So it's just going to be a lot of back catalog stuff that I've... Um, you know, that I've been sitting on. It's not going to make much of a difference to you guys, but to me, I mean, it's just a lot of older stuff that I've had that I've been sitting on that I have to show you guys. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled for future updates. Thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate all the support. And, you know, be sure to leave some comments, private message me with any questions or um, requests or what have you. But um, thanks again for tuning into the DVD update, and I'll catch you in another one. Later.